meat of this chapter. Um, you did this great section. I like the categories here, the types of organisms by, I, I would say, by my interpretations, by function. By function. Yes. So, uh, yeah, let's get started. So the first of these was the, the shredders. Yep, yep. Uh, and that you think about making materials available to to the uh, the small organisms in the soil. Uh, you you put a uh, you know a bean stem or a uh, you know a potato leaf uh, you know or you add maple leaves on top. That's huge compared to the size of most of the organism in the soil. Yes. So uh, and there's very very little surface area, and and a lot of the rate things happen depends on how much surface area you've got where things are, are going on. So I guess if you've yeah, got, a leaf. So some of these things, a leaf would be like a sheet of plywood. Exactly. So, yeah. 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 Uh, or, yeah. Take it to a human analogy. You've been handed a whole cow to eat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you don't want to eat a whole cow. You want no. to cut down into you know bite-sized pieces. Yes. Exactly. You know, so, something that's accessible, uh, and that's really what the shredders do. Is they're, they're the ones that go in and and do that first sizing it down to, to smaller pieces right. um, you know and uh, and you're right I'm I'm not a biologist I know a bit of biology you know enough biology to get by I'm not a biologist I'm certainly not a taxonomist right. uh, I, I also know there's far far more variation in, in what particular species will do those functions in different areas right. and the important thing is understanding well yeah what is what is the function what do they do? So you've got the larger soil soil animals uh, that will take the big pieces and break them down into smaller pieces. So it's like so, a couple, maybe three examples of that. Yeah. So uh, the obvious one is the earthworm. Yeah. You know, uh, and yeah, we'll get back to in more detail to different types of earthworms later. But yes, you know, yeah. what a big part of what they do. You know, they will. Uh, particularly the larger earthworms, you know, they'll right. grab a leaf, they'll chew chunks off the leaf. And, uh, you know, as it passes through their body, it gets ground down into smaller pieces. Right. And they, they digest some, they get some nutrition out of it, but a bunch of the, the nutrients that were in that, that leaf that they ate go at the back end. Oh, like a good example would be like a cow, like a, the grass goes in the cow. And when it comes out of the cow, it still kind of looks like grass. Yep. The cow gets bigger, so the cow's getting something, but there's a lot yeah, of grass left there's over. There's a lot of, for... lot of grass left over, yeah. Right. Would a uh, slug be another kind of shredder? A slug or a snail would be a shredder. Yeah. Uh, this was yeah. a, a key they... thing when I read this book is, you know, a lot of gardeners, we hate slugs, we hate snails, we watch them destroy our stuff. And reading this chapter, and I, it may have, I may have come across this idea that they break down stuff before but it really got me understanding the role the slugs and snails play in the soil because we always just think of them as this problematic pest, but I didn't really understand that they're, they're maybe as important as earthworms in terms of breaking stuff. They don't just eat yeah. living stuff. They eat all, there's all kinds of different slugs and snails and that they eat kind of whatever they can get their hands on and they eat a lot of stuff that we don't see them eating. That's right. Yeah, they, and you know, slugs especially, they like to be underneath. You know, yeah, hidden, hidden, hide. hidden from sight. You know, they only, and yeah, they'll come out at night when we, we provide them with a, a banquet of, of, of really nice stuff to, uh, yeah. to chew on. Uh, but generally they're, they're staying pretty close to the ground. They're not going, you know, we, we very rarely have uh, slug feeding or snails feeding on, you know, mature tomato plants. No. They'll delete really the seedlings, but they'll, you know, once things are up and bigger, they'll know they stay close to the ground. Yes. But most of what they eat is, yeah, the dead stuff, you know, the leaves that have fallen, the uh, the detritus on the ground, and they break it down into smaller pieces. Well, I have to think like, you know, for a snail to be able to manufacture a shell for itself, it's taken on a lot of calcium to, you know, it's not just getting oh, yeah. that out of the air sort of thing. That's all from organic matter. That's right. right? Uh, so, you know, think about how much they're eating to make that. They're making rocks yeah. out of stuff, you know? Uh, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And another one would be, uh, yeah, 
sow bugs, pill bugs, wood oh, lice. Yeah. You know. What are they? What are those sow bugs? I mean, so people could, people when I was a kid, we called them potato bugs, pill bugs, oh. sow bug. You can Google it. And, and but you know they're probably not potato. It's just something people call them here. Potato bugs is another thing. And, but yeah, potatoes, yeah, potato, guess, potato, so. Colorado potato beetles are something very different. Totally different. And, and they will go up the plant and and chew your tomatoes and your potatoes. So uh, by, you don't want those. But but the uh, by pill yeah. bug you mean the arthropod. So arthropod. Yeah, yeah, lots of lots of legs. Pretty yeah. small. You know, they might be a quarter of an inch long, or you know, you know half a centimeter in length if you're if you're metric, and uh, yeah, they're the ones where if you scare them, they'll they roll up. They've got a, a hard shell on the outside. Yeah. So a lot of like my little like, armadillo bugs. A lot of my viewers will say, um, you know, what do you do for pill bugs? How do you deal with them? I've never noticed them to do anything to any any of my plants. What are they they're, doing in there? They they really, if they wander up and they eat something living, it's by accident. Right. <laughs> They really are detritus feeders. Right. They really do, you know, they, they aren't going to be a problem in the garden because all they're doing is breaking down the, the, uh, the dead organic matter. Right. So they're and as many, they're, they're, they're beneficial. They are as beneficial as worms in a sense. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're not, maybe not tunneling. I mean, worms do a lot mm -hmm. of tunneling work as well. A lot of your tilling right. for you, but, um, so they're just, they're just all good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it's funny. They never seem to, uh, proliferate there never seems to be a population explosion they're always around but you never have like an incredible explosion of them i guess it's just if if you want to see a lot of them you you find a, an old rotted log and you you know if you lift that up they like rotten wood that's true they like rotten wood and uh yeah, i th i think there's actually symbiotic bacteria in their gut that they can digest the wood hmm yeah. Huh. So they're 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 getting the benefit out of some of the stuff that other creatures can't can't eat oh, or wow. can't get the energy out of. I see. Uh, because of you know the way their their metabolism works. So they they like the the uh, indigestibles. Yeah, rot, the indigestibles. Yes. <laughs> well, that's great then. So they're I mean they're they're really a beneficial par excellence. Yeah. yeah. No threat to your yeah, plants. Yeah. And yeah. Stuff, nothing else can well, eat. And if you if you if you did see them as a problem because they're you know, under the bark in your tree, I'm sorry, that's a symptom. Your tree has got problems. Right. Your tree is dying and they're just Your tree eating. is dying. Yeah. No, <laughs> your tree is dead. It just doesn't know it yet. <laughs> they're eating the newly dead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I see. Okay. So that's the shredders.